I'm currently working on a desk organizer made out of ash with a ductile's uh, carcass. And uh, I came to the point where I had to inch the lead, which is made out of frame and panel structure, into the carcass. So I thought it was a good idea to uh, talk about uh, how I install uh, a lead, so how I inch actually a lead into a base. And uh, in this video I will show you step by step how I actually do it. First of all, when we need to inch something, the most important thing is uh, deciding uh, what kind of inch uh, you want to buy. In this case I want the lead actually to open like this and then I want it to stay at 90 degree. So for this reason I went for uh, a stop inch uh, which is made by Brasso. In this case it's the JB101 which is a small hinge that I also use for jewelry box is about 19 millimeter uh, long and um, I use Brasso because uh, they are uh, high quality hinges and they ensure uh, good consistency on the thickness and the size of it. So when you actually uh, with a caliper take the dimension and then bring it into your work they are uh, definitely like pretty consistent and you don't make any kind of mistake. Something that not always happen with uh, other kind of hinges. But in the market there are like good quality hinges that you can uh, choose. Uh, say that, uh, one thing that you have to check, that I usually check, is the thickness of the carcass. And uh, has to be right for the hinge that you choose in order to leave a little bit of a ridge in front of it. So once you have done all this research and you choose for your uh, hinges, then it's time to understand a little bit what's the right way to do a clean job. And uh, to align the lead in a very good way that there is no twist and uh, it closes perfectly. So let's have a closer look to how this hinge is made. Uh, basically this hinge will allow us like a movement uh, between the two parts and uh, which are called the knuckle and the wing and uh, the wing will basically stop at 90 degree allowing then the lid to stay in this position when it's open so the knuckle which is this part here will uh, be installed into the base of the carcass, so in this edge here, and the wing will go afterwards into the lead. One thing that we have to decide first is uh, where we want to put the hinge into this edge. So for this particular work I'm gonna go I believe 30 millimeter away from the edge where uh, I will put a pencil mark and that will be my starting point. Installing like hinges into a work it can be like a very fast and easy a job or it can be a very critical job if you are aiming to uh, a perfect final result uh, for this reason like the way I do it I always use uh, like two marking gauges and this is because um, one marking gauge will be set up for the thickness of in this case the knuckle that will go into this edge and the other marking gauge will be instead set it up to um, identify the, the depth, so this space here, which is going to be uh, the dimension that I will have to uh, recess in order to be uh, perfectly installed into the edge. So we basically set up, we take this measurement very uh, accurately and uh, once we set it up on the marking gauges, we can then transfer it into uh, our work. Uh, pay attention that uh, there can be like uh, some slight differences between hinges. So in this case I'm gonna put two hinges. So try to repeat this operation for uh, every part of the hinge, the knuckle and the wig. And uh, also double check with the second hinge if uh, everything is corresponding or not. In that case then you have to adjust it. Okay, so let's take first 30 millimeter from the edge. 
we just put a pencil mark and let's do the same thing on the other side this is the second pencil mark and then with a square just trace it still with a pencil at this point and let's do the same on the other side okay so as we said before now it's time to take uh, uh, with the marking gauge, the thickness of the knuckle, which is this one, so I mean sometimes like especially the first time, like it's good also to you know set up these gouges and then just do a test fit. Um, into a sacrificial board just to see if the fit uh, will be right or not and uh, with the other marking gauge instead we will get the depth of the inch and of course the distance that we need to consider will be this one from this point till the pivot point so we will go like that okay so now now we have the two marking gauges set it up and we can start to translate transfer actually uh, this measurement into the work okay you should try to be very accurate on this uh, uh, in this moment here because everything that you will transfer on your work will be then definitive. Um, if you go a little bit shy than the real dimension, then afterwards when you test it, you can actually uh, fix it by enlarging uh, the recess. But if you go too big, then you will have like um, gaps in the back, which is not good. So try to be very precise in this operation or either Try to do a test, a test uh, with a sacrificial board to see if these uh, dimensions are right. So now that we have actually marked the length, so how deep actually the knuckle will go into the edge. I don't know if you can see it, but here we have like a, a pencil line. So basically we can just go against the edge and trace it, trying maybe to be a little bit to not go over the line, but let's try to mark it just a little bit. Don't go too far. So let's say we did the first tracing. Now with a marking knife, we can bring the pencil line down and then we start from there. Okay, now that we have the starting point of this line, so we can identify how deep the inch will go in, uh, we have a pencil mark here, so we can actually, now I have the sign of the depth, uh, which connects to the pencil line, and I can bring the pencil line down, marking with a knife, let's do that. Okay, and uh, what I need to do now is actually take the inch and uh, put it upside down and try to locate it where this first sign is. We know already the depth, how um, deep will go into the edge the inch so we just put the knuckle upside down and uh, in order to ensure like a very snug fit what i do is just i push the inch into the line that we already marked with a knife i try to overlap it till uh, i actually don't see it anymore 
And that will be for me the moment where I will just put a, a small mark on the other side of the inch. I will show you in a second. So let's do it. This is good. Okay. Okay, just don't go all the way. You can actually, but doing like this, we will ensure that uh, there's not gonna be any uh, loose uh, fit, so no gaps, and uh, we will have like just a very, very tight and stuck fit. So once we did that, and we have now like uh, um, an idea of where this line is, um, we can finish off with the marking gauge, the depth of the inch, because we have the, the starting point and the end point of the inch, so we can do also that. Okay, in this way, so now we have this uh, rectangular area, which is actually the projection of the knuckle. And what we need to do next will be to bring down these uh, two sides lines and uh, also mark the depth that we want in order to identify exactly all the west area that we have to chisel off in order to install the inch. Let's do that as well. Okay, so what we can do now is just like a bring, so we have the two points on, let's say, side view. So we can just put two marks with a pencil and with a marking gauge that we set it up already for the thickness of the hinge, we can just, as I already did, like I brought a line down here, just trying not to go over those two points. But uh, once we have this line visible here, then we can bring down the sides uh, with a marking knife just uh, close to that line and then we can finish off this line in order that it's connected to the edge as well so basically we just bring those two lines down just a little bit it's better this way because otherwise I don't see where the line is. You might don't see me though. One side. And the other side. Okay, so now I try to just to show you, I try to let you see what I now get. So now we have all the measurements that we want. So we have the thickness of the inch that I will need to chisel off. And the, let's say cross section of the area of the inch that is marked. And now we just, with some chisel and a mallet, we just go there and uh, with a bit of care, we just take off the waste. Uh, we're gonna go and chisel out the waste out of here if you in this case I have like a reasonable amount of space here I know that I'm not gonna damage this edge here but uh, if it's very small then it can be like a very good idea to just put like a piece of MDF or whatever it is like just in the back of it and clamp it down so it will give a little bit more strength to to the side when you chisel and uh, you will not risk to ruin this edge and any any and have a, having any breakout or whatever. So this can be like a good way of doing it. But in this case, I think I would be alright just by chiseling without 
any piece of wood in the back. So what I do, so in this, just to let you know how I'm gonna uh, do it, I will basically, I've got now the tracing of the area. So when I'm gonna go chiseling this uh, waste, I will first, uh, with a chisel, like create a smaller rectangular inside and I will chisel off that first. And then once the majority of the waste will be taken out, then uh, I can go straight on the final edge uh, in order to have like, you know, a super flat um, final uh, um, cut. And also because in this way, as you know, if you leave too much waste in front of the line with the chisel, when you chisel out, then the chisel will go back and then will actually enlarge the space and you don't want that otherwise you will have gap. So for this reason, I just take off first the majority of the waste and then slowly, slowly reduce, you know, the offset in order to get straight on the, on the section that I've drawn here. So of course, take a sharp chisel and uh, with a mallet, I'm just gonna do what I told you. So I will just recre recreate here like a, a small inner offset. So this way, like, uh, you will be sure that uh, you're not gonna change any dimension. So try always to use like a chisel that, uh, I think I went a little bit too big on this one. I'll just make it smaller. Try to pay attention also on the top edge. I mean, you can also do this uh, if you have a router jig that you just build up and a small router in this case, but I don't have it. So you can just also take the waste out just with the router. But I believe that uh, this is also a good way, like it's not slow. So always try to get like a chisel that actually almost fit the work that you want, because this will... Uh, give you like a better finish cut. Luckily I've got a chisel that is exactly the size of the hinge, but I'm not gonna use this right now because anyway, I'm just gonna, it's, it's too perfect for that. So in this case, I'm gonna use a smaller chisel just because I don't need to go like straight on the final line, but I'm just creating like an offset. So it doesn't really matter. And it doesn't. Perfect, but you know. Okay, once this is done, then we can. Uh, I think it's uh, the feathering off, so we can just do a series of, um, you know, chisel um, cut, uh, trying, of course, not to be too rude on it, so we have to always consider the depth of it. So we can go like, not really down to the line, but uh, close to it. And uh, for this reason, we use the chisel in the other way around. So instead of having the flat side towards us, it will be on the other way. So here we can, it's just a matter of pressure. We can just do it like, um, slowly. We don't have to get there like uh, in one hit. We will do this and then take the waste off and then go a little bit deeper. So in multiple, multiple passages are fine and uh, 
also like more accurate but once you establish you know like now I'm not going really deep also I can't really because it will damage it so I'm just going like a couple of taps not that much pressure and then I will go down to the line afterwards and I'm always working on that offset rectangle that I'm, I've drawn okay here we go so this is the kind of so I'm not going straight to the depth that I marked so now I'm gonna take this off and then keep doing it till I will create like a flat surface on the bottom okay and now clamp the piece down so that I can actually remove the waste and the piece is not gonna move and what I'm gonna do with a, a chisel I will just take off the bit that I already feather in the offset In this case, I'm not really paying attention to be per perfectly flat. I'm just removing the waist because we are not at the final depth. So this is done. And now what I'm going to do is just feathering off again, trying to get closer to the line and let's see what happens. Very close, just a little bit more. Let's see if I can use a bigger. Okay, so now I can see my line and I can just go there. Okay, we reached our depth. So we reached our depth, so now we have basically the offset marked and uh, what I'm gonna do is just slowly work my way into the established final lines and clean up this one a little bit and then test fit the hinge and see how I did it. So now in this case, when I'm working on the lines, I can just go back on the normal use of the chisel, so the flat side facing me, in this case. And just taking a little bit at a time. And then When I'm just very close, I can just put the chisel I can just put the chisel when I'm very close 
perfectly straight. to get the final hit and then clean off so if, if this bit here was a little bit small then I could have doing pressure on this way I could have ruined this edge, but uh, as I said, I have like a reasonable amount of space, so I'm not having any trouble on this. I do the same on the other side. Just trust your mark lines. The less you take, the better is going to be the final result because the chisel is not going to be pushed backwards so I'm right now on the final mark so perfectly straight and hit and then Okay, we still have the front edge to clean up. This chisel is actually exactly the size. So I think it will be fine for it. Maybe it's a little bit too big. I don't want to leave any mark on the edge. So also in this case, I will go for a smaller chisel and as I did before let's take a little bit and then close to the line Now I can go straight on that line. So perfectly straight and it. now just pairing in order to get a flat surface so in this case you can do also a little bit of undercut I mean creating a, a kind of a angle on the base but uh, not too much otherwise the inch will sink so try to be as flat as you can and uh, now we just check how we did it but you can definitely do a little bit of undercut uh, on the sides maybe with a smaller chisel first check how it goes and then we see if we need to do it or not so because because we did uh, we put our lines in the way that I showed you before I can already see that uh, the fit is uh, very snug I mean no gap at all I just put it in place at the moment 
I didn't push it all the way through but as you can see like it's very solid I mean I just push it in and now I'm trying to see if I have to do a little bit more work it seems that there is something underneath so the hinge in this case is a little bit proud I'm gonna try to push it and see if it's just a matter of fitting it right but uh, it's possible that you have to do a little bit more work but we are at, the good, at a good stage at the moment let's ensure that the, so at this stage I can see that there is no gap underneath but uh, the inch is a bit proud so I definitely need to go a little bit deeper or maybe there is just something here in the wall or in the base that is keeping the inch to go straight down so let's work a little bit more on this surface and see what happened cut here so that the inch just uh, is, is clean and you don't see any gap at all so it's possible also that I'm not going perfectly flat on this and maybe there is an, a, a slow, uh, like a, a small angle that's why the inch is proud so let's try to go deeper and not to push too much on the ridge otherwise on this bit otherwise you can break it so just have like Ensure to have a control of perfect control of the chisel when you do this this work. It comes with time and practice. So and then do a little bit of more of work. Don't overdo things because you can't go back, but just do small progress so that you can adjust. Okay, it's not bad. Still a little bit more, and I definitely need to clean this front edge. But I'm there, I'm on the line. Just per the surface, just resting and doing this kind of circular motion so that you can go always okay you see I, I think here there was a little ridge <sighs> and maybe just do a little bit of undercut don't touch the clean edge that is here on the top just undercut, leaving, you know, even just half a mil and work uh, in order that the inch has got nothing, not even like a small particle that keeps it away from the clean edge. Everything that is visible needs to stay clean so you can undercut as well in these two sides but then you have to use a, a smaller chisel that fits into this opening because otherwise you can create gaps here and there so let's see okay so this is the moment of truth I'm gonna test the inch and uh, remember just to work slowly sometimes working slowly you know it's a little bit painful, but uh, if you work slowly and uh, uh, in an accurate way, then there is less chances that you make mistake. So let's give it a try. I think we should be pretty good. There is just a little bit of material here. Okay. So let's give it a try. So you see, it's not fit.
and is pretty clean is uh, almost flush maybe there is just a little bit of adjustment actually it's pretty good so what we need to do next is uh, do the other hinge and uh, once it's done I will show you how to uh, take you know the right uh, uh, measurements for the lid and uh, then we we'll, we will inch the lid as well and give a try so I installed the second inch into the carcass and now it's time to do a little bit of prep work uh, on the lid uh, because basically I will uh, I still have an opening on the front uh, whether we'll add a little bit of uh, wood here and that will uh, ensure the flat closing of the lid. At this stage I just put some shims on it so that I have the lid perfectly flat with the sides and um, I also need to use shims um, in order to get an even gap of the lid um, with the carcass. So I will first do, do that and once everything will be secured and in place I then will show you how to take the measurement to fit the wings into the lid and get like a perfect alignment of it. Okay, now that everything is uh, clamped and secure, I can just take the reference from the knuckle, knuckle into the inch, so I will have actually the, the two points that I need to know to make actually the recess into the lid. Okay, done. So now we can unclamp it and basically do exactly what we did for the carcass into the lid. And once we do that, we've done that, then we can test fit and see how it goes. So now that uh, we have the signs of the knuckles on the lid, then we can uh, take the two marking gouges, set up everything as we did uh, for the knuckles, so in the wings, so we will take the thickness of the wing and also this distance here, and just trace it on the lid and and we just uh, do the same operation again and then we will test fit the lid into the carcass and see how it goes so don't make confusion and uh, just trace into the lid the right hinge uh, because as we said before there can be like slightly slight difference between the two wings so pay attention to that. So name in case the hinges and just uh, do the same operation as before. Okay, now we have done the hinges for the lid as well, so we cut the slot 
and now it's just a matter of trying if the alignment is right. So we just put it on the top, still using just some shims here, and see if everything goes well. Okay, so as you can see, it actually does, everything is aligned, there are no gaps, it's clean, and now I will have to drill the holes into the hinges, fit the bottom ones first, and then do the lead and see how it's gonna be the closer. After that, uh, we will probably have to do a few adjustments to get like a, a perfect even cut and I still have to plane a little bit the back and uh, clean all the surfaces. But uh, this is pretty much the process when uh, you put the hinges. Uh, it's just, as I said before, a matter of uh, doing correctly and uh, paying attention to details because every gap that uh, will show up here will be actually, uh, you know, not very pleasant in a good piece. So it's not really difficult. And uh, once, uh, in terms of the drilling the holes for these hinges, so once you locate your hinges on the slots, you can just use like a, a bravo, like something that uh, is pointy and just uh, take the center of the point in there and then drill uh, a hole and uh, remember when you use especially like brass screws like this, very small it's always a good idea to put a little bit of wax on it because they can snap. So they also give with the brass so, um, a metal uh, screw, um, which is good to start actually the, to screw it for the first time uh, because it doesn't really snap. And then once uh, the all is done, you can go uh, and put the brass ones. So I'll do that and then we will see uh, the final uh, result of it. Well, this is the final result. I drilled the holes into the uh, slots, in store the hinges and uh, because I did a, a pretty good preparation work with the shims, the lid is not actually touching the sides and for this work, because I'm gonna go and shape these sides at an angle, I just wanted to figure out how much I could push the lid down and um, next I will add a piece of wood here and shape the sides. Um, in terms of the hinges, I had no major gaps and uh, in case you have some gaps, it's good that uh, you drill the holes to install the hinges. Uh, instead of going in the center of the hole uh, of the slot, Let's say, for example, you had some gap on this edge here, so the hinge is not going to go all the way to the end. You could actually drill the hole a little bit towards this edge, so that the hinge, when it's stored, will be pushed that way. But in this case, everything is pretty clean, and uh, I, I didn't have to do it. So this is the way I do it. It's pretty safe. I learned it from the masters at uh, Rowden School and uh, it works. So let me know if this video was helpful for you and uh, also if you do it in another way, it could be interesting to uh, have a different opinion. So leave comments and uh, follow us on Instagram uh, under Edeneban and uh, also on our YouTube channel which is as well Edeneban. Thank you for uh, your attention and uh, have a good day.